phenol black folks and check out what Vesta and Jupiter do to the South Pole at in the dark at pretty much 103 UTC I'm gonna pull up 147 UTC on the chart that I got for you okay we're at Palau and basically what you're going to see is what we have at also at you get this from the sun the 730 UTC okay so I'll pump that up there a little bit 200 take a good look at it and then basically I also have some stars from I can show you uh, you're gonna see this right here and it's gonna look like a remnant but we're gonna pull in on it first we'll go to 400 and then you start noticing it and then I go to 999 and I just always take time to show you that that's what I'm doing on the screen now I can, at 999 I can't go any bigger until I use a magnifier and what we'll do is I'm gonna save time for editing and pull that up. Didn't need to screw that up, but let's go ahead and get our magnifying in here. And you'll see that there's basically stars and shadows. And I'm gonna keep blowing up and you can see in the lower right hand corner. Now I can't point where the poop when I got the magnifier, but we can really get a great look. And what I'll do is I'll move over and we'll keep zooming in. Okay more than likely it's not a perfect art from the magnifier but it works perfect to zoom in good shots so when we come back down and look at our star cluster yep that's how huge the sun is that there's actually stars or planets that are out by it that are very small either that and it's just the idea they get caught up caught up by being covered up in all the electrical magnification of the electrical magnetic that's coming off the sun it's basically it's a uh, nuclear fusion up there but more than likely three stars make up our sun in the as we had the physicist that died a long time ago he said that there was three suns in our in our solar system okay NASA really doesn't admit to it too much, but that was what we were looking at right there. We blew up in on that. Okay, those are stars there. Make sure, I'll just use the magnifier again. We'll take even a look at that. And then, right now, I guess real well. You know that we're at this shot at 9.99. There's the sun, and there's more that's there. And as you see, they pretty much have the limb down pretty good on on uh, this navy shot. And then we'll pump the magnifier up one more time. And I've already took discounted that everybody keeps on saying it's just the there's two other stars right there and we just pump in it pump up the other leg and then we'll pop back our look again so that you realize that we're not faking you out at all there's those two stars there I had to adjust it's not a perfect dart every time like I say we can't really po point where you can see that there's two stars up and then there's that star combination again as we go there and then I would just go to a little bit and then also we'll check this star out here because when you first start looking at it, it ends up looking like, wow, is that a planet over here or something like that? Now, don't get me wrong, it could be some sort of a planet way the heck up there. You know, there's a bit, whole one IU between us, of distance between us and the sun. So, and then this is over on the, mm, the right hand front side, yeah, right hand side of the sun. Go outside and east, look up to the right. So there was a star over here to the right too. There and then you get that one there. It's very dim, so it possibly could be a planetoid object with some. Uh, basically, we're up as high as we can get. So basically, we have you know there's probably a lot more in our solar system than what we believe. And uh, what I've been showing you late now, I can't discount that it possibly could. What I've been showing you lately could be Vesta. But why does a 165 mile uh, object end up looking? So large and then 165 mile object or Jupiter did what we've seen you back up the footage for this here for Palau 
what we're seeing this in the middle of the night. Let me hit play on this so you realize what I'm talking about on that. I'm going to just hit start. I think start will do it. Well, back. And then you're getting this. And it's not the moon. And I can prove that that's not the moon. Because basically I can go over here to... Uh, well, there's the earthquakes lately. Look at the Madrid and everything. And then that's what we got out there in California. Okay, recently. And then there's the Oregon quake. And also, I should try to hurry up, but I'm going to, let's pop over to Nehemiah and get this going. And I'll hit play and start on this, and you'll end up getting the moon coming up. So you'll know that's, that's not the moon that you're seeing there on that shot down there. And I'll just hit start. I think it'll play through here. Go windmill going. I wish I could get faster on this thing. And then we have our radar dome that they now have down there. And there's the moon coming up. So you know that the idea that the factual, and then the 2300 hour there, and you can see uh, we have the sun coming up here. Make sure the sun coming up. Boom. Then you get with shadow of the sun, basically a 3D image of the sun is up and forth. And then. Uh, if you just go back up and back the video tape up and you'll see that that's not the moon that we're seeing over. Should be able to get the moon coming here again in a second, I think. There comes the moon at, yeah, 20. So it's not here at 103, okay? So this is not the moon, okay? So basically it's Jupiter and Vesta, the best I can tell. Because we'll go over and look at this. So something has basically, like when the meatball did it before and we found that, there could be a possibility that was best up there by Jupiter, maybe. But it's a 165 mile wide, or you know, round object. So, and I got a map there for it. So, maybe that's what we've been seeing is Vesta because there you got Mercury there. But it's uh, sure looking hella large then. From so far away that when you look, we were showing you on Sechi footage. Go back to the last couple of videos I've been showing. So, but I still really don't. It's so big and large. I just don't see how Vest is going to look that doggone big. But it's a possibility. But why doesn't NASA mark it? So go back and watch the last couple of videos. Now I can take and we'll step a little bit more ahead. And I think I do get a good. Hang on, if what we get up in the left hand side, one more step, a couple more. It might just be auroral action then, which is amazing. So we might be seeing some of the most maximum. Or remember, this is Antarctica. It's not North Pole. But there's the sun coming up. So back up, and you know. So this might be more proof positive of what uh, the physicist has passed away. He died at a very young age, around 50 something, and. Uh, he always said that there was three suns in the solar system. So maybe the stars are very small. And maybe we have more than the three that he knew of then. So anyway, this is just awesome if Jupiter puts off that much light onto the uh, South Pole in the middle of the night. That's 2200. And now, nope, because we already showed you what the moon was coming up, okay? The moon comes up earlier. So. Matter of fact, I think you might get the moon coming through here. Let's go keep on backing up. There's the moon. I think you can see it coming through here. Sorry about the clicking. But I think you can find the moon in this, but anyway, I showed you on the other side of the camera. And back. There's the moon right there. Okay, and at 1040 UTC, is that about right? So no matter what, whether that is the moon or not, let's take a look at that. It pretty much should be the moon. And let's get up to 999, I guess. Boop, 999. Might 
be a star cluster. Let's get the magnifier out on that. That's interesting. Hang on. It's not the moon because the moon comes up at 2010. Okay, there's your 2020. Okay, and then we'll hit it again. 2030, 2010, because you got 21, you got the clock there too, and then away, so then we go back to plow, so it's just the southern camera, you got the magnifier on this, and that's a star cluster. At the earlier hour. So there's the proof that we've got way more asteroid belts around us than remember a year ago at Thanksgiving time. A whole year ago before Thanksgiving they told us that there was no asteroid belt near us. Now that could be what I've just showed you over it from uh and let's go see about a pattern if you reversed it. Because that's getting and it pretty much looks like what we got in front of the sun down there that I've showed you over on three. So let's just go up here all the way that I can. 16. Come on, magnifier, get out of the way. There we go. So it pretty much looks like the star cluster that we have out in front of the sun. And it pretty much matches what I've been able to prove before that no matter what, that when we are at this shot, when we show the sun coming up and so forth, and I think it'll be coming here, that when we see that blotch, Pretty much more than like when you get northern lights there too that we've been getting. See if I can get rid of the magnifier before it comes around because there comes the sun and there you go. So that is that star cluster again that we're seeing around the 10 o'clock. 10 because you're going to see the 10 something and that's what we had on the clock over at as we screwed across here real fast. That's what we have that star cluster right there. And we'll just actually just pump out. Boom. That's that star cluster that's in front of the sun. So more evidence that it's that, that star cluster. And there's the sun up there. And that's that star cluster. And then I'll show you where it is again on when we go ahead and look at it on. Oh, I gotta get down here and give you the clock. You see, at 1035 UTC. And then that's what we actually have when we were looking at there's Venus recently. And then that's what we have when we blew in on this here. Okay. So proof positive is a proof positive that we have a star cluster that's up in front of the sun. Okay, I showed you this. And actually, we don't even need to go up much more because you can pretty much tell it right there. That star cluster is in front of the sun. Okay, because basically I'll get rid of the magnifier. Boom. Boom. That star cluster is right there in front of the sun. Alright, so you're getting to see it. And amazing. Currently we have a geomagnetic storm, and then try to look back at the most recent since I've been to the new upload area because I can't upload my old area. So try to go over to uh, you know my old channel, you've, and try to let people know and email people to go to the new channel because I can only upload there. Okay, so basically right now we got a good solar wind storm going. So basically tonight you're going to have a nice aurora that you can go. And the red line will show you that basically. Should be able to get some northern lights very easily. That's what's going on with our aurora on the North Pole right now. And then here's what's going on in the South Pole. And then we've seen what we were getting here from. Uh, I will go ahead and see if you can see what you see here. Uh, actually, there there goes the moon. You're going to see some of the northern light action, and you get a shadow from the moon, the northern light, and the southern light. You know, you got to understand that that's auroral action from the South Pole that you were seeing coming across the screen there. So there's some good auroral action from the South Pole, and and this is an asteroid star cluster that's in front of the sun. I proved it to you in the past. Let's go take a look at that. And there it is. And I'll, what's astounding is the people that belligerently in the past tried to say that it's something to do with the camera. And it's not, as you see here, and I'll keep blowing in. As you can see the shadows of the stars that are above. You see the three stars. So this is in front of the sun. And I'll close out by showing you 
again the image up by I can't point but there's the three stars in the blotch